back in the garden with Lunchbox Crows on margarita night. Let's see how they're doing. First up, we got the Red Hot Cookies by Sweet Seeds. They're on day 16 since they were planted. And we already got three nodes. They're looking really, really happy. They just turned off the heat mat. Gave them a little bit of water. So I'm really excited about growing these out. These Red Hot Cookies by Sweet Seeds. They say I think one in every five or three uh, is supposed to have neon pink flowers like these. So I'm really, really looking forward to growing these out and seeing what they do. But so far, they are amazing. And I planted them instead of my typical seed starter soil. They got planted in um, Happy Frog, just regular potting soil. I hadn't tried it before. I wanted to give it a shot. I heard good things. And I just did regular well water. Uh, and the soil. And so far they are looking really, really happy. Next up we got the Dark Poutine by Smokin' Grower. These girls are looking really, really nice as well. Very happy, very lush, very easy so far. Only had the one topping. One of the sisters. Nice healthy leaf growth here. I defoliated in here seven days ago and I took these girls all down quite a bit and did the training back there. So healthy, healthy regrowth in one week. I definitely took all these big leaves off, so. And the other, little bird's eye view of all three of them. Oh, I think I'm still in the wide angle or the fish eye, so uh, sorry about that. Ooh, you see weird stuff. Ooh. Next up, the skunk number one by Sensi Seeds. Skirt. Oh, also, happy to report, looking very healthy. Nice growth patterns, nice leaf formation and development, and they're already pretty damn stinky. Back in the back in the back in the back in the back, we got the banana punch. That would be by Barney's Farm. We've done our outward canopy training. We've opened up the middle of the canopy. Let these inner branches start to come up and hopefully become a little bit more dominating. Um, this one and this one are a little bit lighter than this one, obviously, but this one seems to be pretty stunted. Not sure what's going on with her. But she did just get a crazy defoliation and lollipopping and super thinning of her canopy. Same with this one. We did a lot of work in a short amount of time, so that could have something to do with it. I've also been playing with my pH lately and trying to go up a little bit. 5.8 to 6.2 is the general recommendation for cocoa, but I've been trying to go to like um, 6.5. 6.4 somewhere in that neighborhood a little bit higher to see what happens if I see any changes and since I've been doing that uh, I had the issue with the other crop that uh, is just inside 16 days of flower which we'll see in a minute um, you know I was going through the issues with that one which I think we got resolved with the flush and so on and so forth uh, but these ones seem to be doing the same thing so I might uh, if I see the same thing happening on the skunks I'm definitely going to drop my pH back down uh, otherwise, I don't know if I have some climate issues going on in here or something like that because there's no pests. Whatever's going on in here is definitely uh, soil related and or foliar related. But it seems to only be affecting the plants that are in their fourth month of veg. Uh, again, only two crops consecutively of three plants, so we'll see. Anyway, that's how these girls are doing. I wish they all three looked like that one, or at least this one. This girl's 
actually looking pretty damn healthy. She's ready to go into flower. She's lightening up on her nitrogen and getting old enough and she's basically just put me in flower. This one might be doing a little bit of the same thing. All right, enough about the veg. Let's go look at the stars of the show. That's enough of that. Good God, look at the colors in her though. In her, on her, all around her. Come on. Looking at the bee nanner over here. Not failing to amaze. Definitely not failing to make me say, ooh. Ah, every time I come out here. Little sister. A little bit more pink and purple in the flowers. Leaves are still pretty damn green. Got it in and out. This girl's about two weeks away from harvest. This one's getting some really nice color on her as well. Back over here, of course, we got the cheese by Barney's Farm, which is one of the ones that, uh, or the three that were having a little bit of a nutrient issue. But obviously, I think we've resolved that. We do have a little bit of nutrient burn on the tips of some of the leaves. You might see, not too concerned about that. It's a little bit early in the bed, in the flower stage for me to want to see any kind of burnt tips or anything like that. So I'm definitely gonna lighten up on her nutrients. But really healthy bud formation. Nice close node spacing. And these are 16 days into flower. Quite the transition in color from this side of the room to this side of the room. I love growing this plant. And this right here is why I love growing different strains every month. I'm always amazed at the colors and aromas that these plants can produce. They're always similar but different and it's always a lot of fun to see how they grow differently phenotypes are like the people of the cannabis plant world or the plant world in general i love growing <sighs> my arm smells so good it's like uh not apricot or peach why am i thinking that uh tangerine like sharp tangerine and some lime some pine in the after. These are gonna be so good. And with the low yield harvest from the last crop, from plants that were smaller than those, obviously these are considerably larger than those. We're looking at a nice yield, nice harvest, with some really, really nice nugs. So with that, the only logical thing to do is to conclude the episode, so, I suppose that's that. Thanks again for stopping by to check on the ladies in the Lunchbox Grows Garden and having a cocktail with me, Lunchbox. And if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Boop, boop.